Recently, Dr. Richard Dawkins was interviewed by Rachel Johnson on LBC, a British talk and debate show, and he made some very interesting comments. Well, I must say, I was slightly horrified to hear that Ramadan is being promoted instead. I do think that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian, a cultural Christian, a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols, and um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country. Well, let's get into it. Stay tuned until the end. If this is your first time here make sure and hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a video or an interview our goal is to help you enter into a confirmed confident and eternal relationship with the source of all life and purpose so in this video we will analyze a clip from that interview however the full interview is available online let's take a listen well i must say i was slightly horrified to hear that ramadan is being promoted instead i do think that we we are culturally a christian country i'm i call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I, I love hymns and Christmas carols. And um, I, I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, it's true that statistically, the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down. Uh, and I, I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, so I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we, certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr truly dreadful. Well, which brings um, me to, to my supplementary point, which is that, as we know, church attendance is plummeting. But the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do, really. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I have to choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that, Professor Dawkins. Why is Islam profound, well, the, the pro way, the fundamentally way the, not decent like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the way women are treated. I mean, Christianity is not great about that. It's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But there's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite, quite different. But the, but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the, and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays. Um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. We will need to keep something in mind as we review this clip. We cannot, or should not, violate any laws of logic when we are arriving at our conclusions. And if the foundation for any belief that we hold leads us to believe something different, we should follow that line of evidence. In philosophy, it is known that new propositions are upheld by preceding propositions, concepts, or ideas. The noetic structure refers to how one builds upon the beliefs one obtains. For example, one must first believe in color in order to believe that a banana is yellow. When it comes to sustaining morality, we can see how the noetic structure is challenged. In such instances, the noetic structure or the structural building blocks of the argument is irreconcilably broken once the naturalist attempts to go from blind evolution from inorganic to organic and from the laws of physics to the laws of morality. Copan writes, 
The familiar cry for justice as old as humanity itself suggests a transcendent moral standard above national laws and social contracts. Additionally, former atheist C.S. Lewis recognized this as well. He wrote, My argument against God was that the universe seemed so cruel and unjust. But how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing this universe with when I called it unjust? See, the naturalist has no epistemic warrant for affirming that straight line. But Dawkins does notice something accurately. The God of Islam and the God of the Bible are vastly different. There's a couple of examples. Surah 332 reads, say, obey God and the messenger. But if they turn away, God does not love the faithless. However, the Bible says in Romans 5 and 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Surah 9, 29-30 reads, Fight those who do not believe in God, nor in the last day, nor forbid what God and his messenger have forbidden, nor abide by the religion of truth from among those who receive the scripture, until they pay the due tax, willingly or unwillingly. The Jews said, Ezra is the son of God, and the Christians said, the Messiah is the son of God. These are their statements out of their mouths. They emulate the statements of those who blaspheme before. May God assail them. How deceived they are. However, the Bible reads, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming he who was called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Dr. Dawkins and many others who would consider themselves cultural Christians want the benefits of Christ without the accountability of Christ. But even an atheist sees a difference between Islam and Christianity. This means they cannot be synchronized and that someone with no skin in the game can see that is telling. Christians are unfortunately partly responsible for the existence of the term cultural Christian. By at times preaching a soft or inconsistent message and thereby leading many to live a soft or indistinguishable Christian life, many non-Christians have been able to reduce Christianity to a life of seeming happiness and seemingly decent morality rather than a call to believe in a true Christ and to live a life based upon that truth. A soft believer will likely be a soft or unwilling evangelist and is likely subject to wavering on their theological positions. Paul writes to the churches in Galatia, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish Having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Later in that letter, he writes, You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. Dr. Dawkins has also said in the clip, I love hymns and Christmas carols, but you missed the point of them. He also said, I feel at home in the Christian ethos, yet you have made a career in challenging and campaigning against Christianity for years. Why attack the one religion that you actually like? Answer, because it's the best challenger to atheism. He recognizes the strength of this opponent. He said, I'm happy with the numbers of believing Christians going down, but I would not be happy if the places where those Christians are able to gather in order to sustain the religion where the numbers are going down were themselves to be torn down. This seems illogical because if there are less Christians, it would make sense that the buildings constructed by and for Christians would also experience a decline. Dr. Dawkins said, if we substituted any other religion, that would be truly dreadful. Wow. But why? Well, first, all religions are different on foundational issues and similar on some conceptual issues. Second, Although you should not judge the veracity of a religion by its adherence, but by its doctrines and dictates. It's also true that religions are mostly known by others through their adherence. 
this is telling. What does this man who denounces Christianity see in reality through the actual Christians and Christian events, buildings, and celebrations that he has experienced in his life? A Pew Research study might give us some insight. Actively religious people are more likely than their less religious peers to describe themselves as very happy. And about half of the country is surveyed. Another research study found Christians are also likely to be satisfied with life, to volunteer and be engaged in civic affairs, and to be more hopeful than those who specify none as their religious affiliation, according to a recent Pew Research Center survey. Those who attend religious services at least monthly are nearly 50% more likely to say they feel hopeful and are about half as likely to feel lonely as atheists. The most active Christians are also 58% more likely to volunteer than those who call themselves nuns. Regular churchgoers are the most likely to say they are satisfied with their own life, their family, and community life. Christians who go to church at least monthly are also nearly twice as likely to volunteer for non-religious charities than those who say their religion is nothing in particular. Other atheists have noted the positive impact of Christianity and Christians in society as well. Matthew Paris is an atheist who lived in Malawi in Africa for some time. Here's what he said. Before Christmas, I returned after 45 years to the country that, as a boy, I knew as Nyasaland. Today, it's Malawi. And the Times Christmas Appeal includes a small British charity working there. Pump Aid helps rural communities to install a simple pump letting people keep their village wells sealed and clean. I went to see this work. It inspired me, renewing my flagging faith and development charities. But traveling in Malawi refreshed another belief too, one I've been trying to banish all my life, but an observation I've been unable to avoid since my African childhood. It confounds my ideological beliefs, stubbornly refuses to fit my worldview, and has embarrassed my growing belief that there is no God. Now a confirmed atheist, I have become convinced of the enormous contribution that Christian evangelism makes in Africa. Sharply distinct from the work of secular NGOs, government projects, and international aid efforts, these alone will not do. Education and training alone will not do. In Africa, Christianity changes people's hearts. It brings a spiritual transformation. The rebirth is real. The change is good. Christianity, post-Reformation and post-Luther with its teaching of a direct personal two-way link between the individual and God unmediated by the collective and subordinate to any other human being smashes straight through the philosophical spiritual framework I've just described. It offers something to hold on to, to those anxious to cast off a crushing tribal groupthink. This is why and how it liberates. Those who want Africa to walk tall amid 21st century global competition must not kid themselves that providing the material means or even the know-how that accompanies what we call development will make the change. A whole belief system must first be supplanted. And I'm afraid it has to be supplanted by another. Removing Christian evangelism from the African equation may leave the continent at the mercy of a malign fusion of Nike, the witch doctor, the mobile phone, and the machete. Returning to the video, Dr. Dawkins goes on to say that Christianity is a fundamentally decent religion. Thanks, Dr. Dawkins. Even Dr. Dawkins is able to assess Islam based upon what the books of Islam say and not based upon what some adherents of Islam do or the ways certain Islamic societies are structured. I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. Because Christianity already exists, many today are reasoning backwards without taking into account how Christianity of today even got here. Christianity is almost 2,000 years old, which like the earth means it had a beginning. In the same way that astrophysicists attempt to study the origin of the universe, we too should look at present day Christianity with an eye to how it began. And at the beginning of the Christian movement, it was not a popular worldview or religion. 
In fact, for the first three or 400 years of its inception, it still was not popular. It was so unpopular that you could be killed in horrible ways for affirming it. Yet these early Christian believers did affirm it. They affirmed that Jesus is God and came to die for our sins. They affirmed that he rose from the grave. They affirmed the teachings and lifestyle of Jesus. The reality is, man, people, would never come up with Christianity on their own. It is not an easy way to live. The only way that the existence of Christianity makes sense is if it's true. In the Bible, whether or not one believes it or disbelieves it like Dr. Dawkins, Jesus is recorded as teaching, turn the other cheek, love your enemy, risk your life teaching about me, do nothing sexually immoral, believe that I will return, believe that I am God, believe that I am the source of all truth, life, and purpose. These are not things that man would make up on his own. What Dr. Dawkins is missing is that these very beliefs are the reason that those church buildings were built. And those beliefs are the reason that those Christmas songs were composed. And those beliefs are the reason that Christianity invaded culture to such a degree that even an atheist can love aspects of it. Therefore, if you remove the beliefs, there is no reasons for all of those buildings and traditions that Dr. Dawkins likes to ever exist. And the only way to substantiate the existence of those beliefs especially when you trace those beliefs to the first century, is to say something actually happened. This guy named Jesus actually and in bodily form rose from the grave. In other words, once you realize the incoherence of a term like cultural Christian, it should lead you to actually become a Christian. Let's return to our discussion about the noetic structure. Recall that the noetic structure refers to how one builds upon the beliefs one obtains. The noetic structure cannot be disrupted when we are arriving at the eventual ontological reality that we experience. For example, you cannot know that the sky appears blue if you're unaware of the existence of the color blue. Likewise, without Jesus living, teaching, dying on a cross, and rising from the grave, you don't get Christians. If you don't have Christians, you don't have a Christian ethic of love, evangelism, and discipleship. If you don't have a Christian ethic of love, evangelism, and discipleship, you don't get churches and cathedrals. If you don't have churches and cathedrals and general acceptance of Christianity, you don't get Christmas carols and other Christian traditions. In other words, you shouldn't rejoice over the benefits and hate the cause of those benefits at the same time. This is akin to loving the creation but hating the creator. Or loving the fact that there is a moral law, but denying the only legitimate creator of that moral law. Logical consistency requires us to build from the foundation towards the conclusion that flows from the evidence. And if that evidence points us in the direction of a perfect source and creator, we are compelled to believe in that creator and then enjoy the benefits that flow from that relationship. All truth is God's truth, which makes sense. Why even an atheist would love the results and outgrowth of God's truth lived out on earth. But I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. What flaws do you see in Dr. Dawkins' reasoning? And how do you feel about the term cultural Christian? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And until next time, peace.